Don't confuse the synthesis scale with the actual amount of nanomoles you get of your oligonucleotide, like your primers. So when you order things, you set a synthesis scale and that's not like the guaranteed amount that you'll get. That's kind of like what they target. And then the actual amount is gonna depend on how well the synthesis goes and things. So they typically have some sort of like minimum that they guarantee you, but it's not gonna be that value that you order. And so 25 nanomoles, and this one is actually 21.3, and this one is actually 20. And this matters because they send it to you as a dried powder, and then you have to actually resuspend it. And you wanna resuspend it to a specific concentration that you want, which means that you need to know how many nanomoles are actually in your tube. You can add one microliter per nanomol if you want a one millimolar solution. And if you want a 100 micromolar solution, then you add 10 microliters per nanomol. Again, the nanomol that's listed on your tubes or on your spec sheet, but not in the part when it's the synthesis scale. Because if you added what was the synthesis scale, it's worth, then you would have your solution would actually be to dilute. And so go with the tube or go with whatever it tells you is the actual number of nanomoles. One microliter per nanomole would give you one millimolar and 10 microliters per nanomole would give you 100 micromolar. And those would be your stocks that then you could dilute into a lower co working concentration and make aliquots of. Before you do any of that though, make sure you spin your tubes down, give them a quick pulse spin so that you don't have any powder on the top. And then it's gonna be a really tiny amount in there. And so you wanna make sure that you kind of like let it sit for a minute, make sure it all gets dissolved and then you can go ahead and dilute it and aliquot it.